For a real Scrapman finale, we should put a bunch of thrusters to it, and we can have a giant mech piston spider walker flyer. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this is Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Scrap Mechanic, and we are back in the piston playground doing some more piston experiments. So last time we made a piston maze, and uh, if you don't know what all this other stuff is, then clearly you haven't been paying attention. Go check out, I'm gonna make a playlist actually, of just the piston playground episodes. So if you haven't seen what all this stuff is, and what it all does, and all the experiments that I've done before, then check out the link in the description, because uh, those are all really fun episodes too. But over here uh, was one of the first piston experiments. Actually, let me delete, this was, uh, this was for today's episode, I was doing some experimenting here with some things, never mind about that. So this, whoops, yes, this is one of the experiments uh, that I first did when the pistons came out, was kind of like an excavator arm type thing. Uh, and some of you were saying that I should make like some type of spider walker thing based off of this kind of idea. And that's exactly what I did for this episode. So we're gonna be looking at a piston spider walker. Now this was actually way more complicated, way more complicated than I ever expected it to be. So I'm gonna show you exactly the kind of mechanism that I came up with to, to kind of make a walking leg motion, which is based off of this, but it's not the exact same thing. Cause see, this one has two pistons just for, technically for really one uh, plane of motion. This is only moving, this is moving out and down, but that doesn't help us go anywhere. In order to go anywhere, this also has to move sideways so you can like drag your body across the ground. So instead I have one piston for each motion. So one piston to go down, one piston to go forward, and that way we can go forward, down, walk, forward, down, walk. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Okay, first let me just show you one leg. All right, so here we go. This is the a single leg. This is a single leg mechanism. You can see it's got a lot of stuff on here. According to the blueprint, it has 16 bearings, two pistons, um, and I'm using a logic gate and a sensor here as well. So the way that this works is you only need one button to control both pistons because the sensor is actually going to help out, which makes it super easy. The entire thing is pretty much controlled by one button. Like all of the legs, all six of, all eight of them on the spider. We'll deal with that when we get to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this to the wall. So if I could just, this is a horrible place to put this wall. Okay, now I'm going to put a button and a seat on here. Button, seat, hook up the button to the logic gate. Hook up the button to the seat. And now we can watch this thing in action. So what this button does is it actually moves this front part uh, forward like that. And then when it moves forward, it actually blocks the sensor. So the sensor turns on and that moves the first piston, the one closest to the body moves it down. I wish I could like point with my mouse or something. I, I'm, I wanna point to the screen at what I'm talking about, but I, I can't do that right now. So I'll zoom in, I'll zoom in. So this piston right here, is controlled by the button. You can see it opens and closes as I press the button. And then that moves this entire wishbone kind of uh, system here over. And you can see that that makes the sensor activate. And when that sensor activates, that makes this piston go down. So then if you look at the leg here, which is a really just, it's a, it's a pillar, not really a leg. And we can pretend that it's closer to the ground. You can see that the leg moves forward, goes down, will touch the ground, will drag back and lift up, all with the press of one button. So now all you have to do is duplicate this multiple times on either side of the body, and then you have to have them offset from each other so that while well, one's going forward, the other one's going back, which just involves changing the logic gate from and to a nor, because now it'll be the opposite. Now when the button goes off, it'll go forward, and then when it's on, it'll go back. So this is how it works. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the prototype, which is a little bit more stable because it's very light and there's not a bunch of design elements that I put on it. And then I'm gonna show you the final product, which could probably use a little bit more tuning because it's a little bit too heavy because of all the stuff I added to it to make it look cool. 
And there's always that cost, the form, form versus function. Whenever I try to make something look cool, it starts to work a little bit worse. But yeah, so I'm pretty proud of this design. Um, it does use two kind of wishbone mechanisms, and what that enables is this leg. You can see that this leg, even though it is moving forward and down, the leg itself stays vertical the entire time. It doesn't angle or anything, which is what was kind of happening over here. Like, if I move, if I move this down, you can see that the whole front angles. So it would be hard to get the leg to be right like level with the ground when you needed it to. But this enables it to stay level. But it's a lot of bearings, so unfortunately I couldn't spawn in like an entire eight of them. Um, so when it comes to the whole spider concept, you know, I know that spiders have eight legs, but don't worry, our, our final spider does have eight legs. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second, but having eight of these things is extremely laggy. Even having six of them just to get the basic concept to work was extremely laggy. And it probably doesn't help that I have all this other stuff in this world too, but we're doing okay. All right, so here is the prototype. And a quick reminder before we actually get on to this, I do have a Discord that I'm actually involving you guys in future videos on for uh, the mountain base and other just random videos. So if you're not a member of the Discord, go check the links down in the description below if you want to join the Scrapper community. It'd be, it'd be really great to be able to interact with uh, more of you on a closer level like that. So check the link, click the links. There's also other links for like merch and Patreon and stuff like that if you really like the channel and you wanna support me a little bit more, that always helps out too. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is the prototype, just the kind of proof of concept, just to see if this was gonna work with all these pistons. You can see we lose a lot of frames. I'm down to like 15 frames, 12 to 15 frames. So now you can see every other leg is active. So then if we wanna walk, I'm actually gonna get rid of this lift here. We're gonna do it slowly at first. That's the good thing about having it be controlled by one button rather than like an automated system. And unless you get really complicated, I'm sure you could, but I have full control over how fast I want the legs to cycle rather than it being like a fixed rate. So we'll do it slow at first. We'll just do one change, another change, another change. So it might be difficult to kind of see what's going on, but I'm gonna try to do it from multiple angles here, nice and slow, so you can really kind of watch the mechanisms at work. So we have the side angle going on here. Let's get this, let's get a nice close up of this one right here. Yeah, so you can see how it moves forward and down, and then it goes back and up. Now in previous walkers like this that I've made in this game and other games like Dream Car Racing, I actually made a six-legged walker in Dream Car Racing. It was full manual control, meaning that I pretty much had each side under its own control and I had a different button to make the leg go forward and a different button to make the leg come back. So it was like this really weird brain teaser of controls to try to make it work, but I've simplified it so much using the sensors here so that it's just one button that controls everything. Now, unfortunately, at least this version does not have any steering and future versions are not much better when it comes to steering either. It, it's, it's a walker, it walks. It looks really cool too. It's got these really awesome, I really like the way that the legs work. They look really mechy. So that's kind of cool. That's the cool thing about it. Okay, and then here we have prototype number two, which is introducing the concept of steering. So now you can see what I was going for with the steering was I figured it might be easiest to try to just do like a, a segmented body steering like this. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see like it wants to try to work, but it really, it really doesn't. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. Um, but I don't know why I kept it in my final build. Honestly, I should probably just delete it in the final build and I uh, just make it go straight and just be a, a walker. I could have thruster steering. Thruster steering is always um, fully adjustable and reliable. It just doesn't feel right, you know what I mean? All right, so now let's get on to the main attraction, the final build with the, des the design on it and stuff, which is uh, unfortunately not the most functional because of all the weight, but at least you get to see something that looks cool. All right, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Piston, Scrapman Piston Spider Walker. It is on the lift right now because I wanna be able to get a look at it without the leg going off like crazy. Now I know what you're gonna say, Scrapman, spiders have 
eight legs. Are you dumb? Are you stupid? How do you not know that spiders have eight legs? Well, I do know that spiders have eight legs, and this spider does have eight legs. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's got, it's a special evolution of Scrapman spider. This is this is a very particular species that um, has evolved to have six primary legs, and then these two uh, these two uh, smaller legs are for, they're for mating purposes. All right, but they're still legs. So this is an arachnid. It's a spider. Shut up in the comments. All right, so we've got our eight awesome red evil eyes. We got some fangs in the front there, and I know it's. Re it's really weird that the legs, the front legs are in front of the head, but don't ask, don't, don't, don't ask questions about that. Um, I just found it would have been a little bit easier not to put the weight on the turning bearing, so that way this thing is just as light as it can possibly be. And then same thing with the back, I put the uh, legs behind the actual rear of the spider, so that way those, uh, this turning bearing was not weighed down either, but... In the long run, it was kind of pointless anyway, since the steering doesn't really work. Actually, not much works about this one. <laughs> but it looks cool! That's all that really matters, right? Is that it looks cool. So here, let's go ahead and put it in action. Um, so, I don't know why... Well, I, I do know why. I think it's because of the weight. But unfortunately, the weight just seems to be a little bit too much for it, and... It just, it acts kind of, it bends. Like this is, this leg is supposed to be horizontal or perpendicular to the body, but you can see it's angled in. So clearly the weight is giving it some issues. And I think because of that, it doesn't actually walk that well, but we'll give it a try anyway. Yeah, see it almost, it almost feels like it wants to walk backwards. I don't quite, I, oh, you know what? The, the steering might be part of the issue too. I'm gonna do an experiment right now. Let's let's lock the steering with a controller and see if that actually makes it more stable and more walkable. The bearings are now locked. Hey, that actually makes it work much better. So it seems like the steering was part of the problem. However, there still does seem to be a weight issue. You see, like, what is going on with that? You see that leg just, it just, it collapses in on itself like that. It's it's giving it extra, like an extra push. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. It must be the weight, but technically that leg should stay directly vertical and not angle in like that. But I'm at least happy that you can see that the the it, it actually walks forward now, which it was not doing in all of my test runs. So there's only one thing left to do with this epic piston spider walker, and uh, I think for for a real Scrapman finale, we should put a bunch of thrusters to it, and we can have a giant mech piston spider walker flyer. Because there's nothing more scary than than the concept of flying spiders. So let's go ahead and make this thing go up in the air. I think it'll be kind of fun to have the thrusters be on the moving legs. Because then we can make it move around in the middle of the air. The question is, how many thrusters are we actually going to need here? You know what? Even just for fun, I'm going to put thrusters as the actual as the actual legs on the bottom here. I don't know why. It's just the, the idea just came to me, and I thought that'd be funny. But let's just go with that. All right. Do you think eight thrusters or no wait six? Twelve thrusters is enough. I'll put some in the middle too. How about that? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up all the thrusters to the logic gate, and you asked me why, the last time I did this in the video, you were asking me why do they hook up all the thrusters to the logic gate instead of just a switch, instead of directly to the switch or directly to the seat. And there's a reason for this, and the reason is, is because if I ever wanna change the location of the switch, or say if I wanna change it from a switch to a button, after I've already set it, it'd be really inconvenient to have to rehook up every single thruster anytime I want to make a change like that. But what this allows is if I ever change my mind about where I put a switch or if I want to change it to a different type of switch or like something else or like a sensor even, then all I have to do is delete the switch and then hook up the new connection just to that one thing. 
rather than having to hook up every single thruster all over again. So now that all the thrusters are hooked up to this thing, all I have to worry about is that logic gate to connect to something. So, so now if I hook up that switch to the logic gate, now that one switch controls every single thruster. But say I wanted a sensor to do it instead of the switch. Now all I would have to do is put a sensor. I can delete the switch, and all I have to do is just add this one connection. And now look at that. Now every single thruster gets instantly remapped. So a little trick for you guys, uh, in case you were wondering. And now we're gonna set every single thruster on max power. And here we go. It's, all right, it's standing. The, the, the flying thruster piston spider walker of noperdom is alive. Okay, let's see if it walks first before we see if it flies. Hey, this actually walks way better, I feel like. I like this, and I like the look of the thrusters. This is really cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our piston spider walker is ready to fly. We're gonna see if we can make this thing become a flying spider piston walker of nopeness. A three, two, one, blast off, it's working! It's working! It's flipping! Is it gonna land? It did a backflip up and, uh, oh, it's on its belly. Belly up, we killed it. I guess, uh, I guess it's not too bad if the flying spiders end up killing themselves off because they just, if they flip onto their backs, then maybe they're not so terrifying after all. So hopefully I've just, I've just relieved your nightmares. Um, and you don't have to worry about flying spiders anymore because this is the evolutionary, evolutionary results of flying, flying spiders. They are just going to kill themselves off, let natural selection do its work. Spiders do not have the aerodynamics for flight. I have proven it in this game. <laughs> this is clearly a real life evolution simulator and all the results are completely accurate and trust trustable, even with the one sample here. So yeah, that is the spider piston walker and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and send this thing off for the end of the episode. Make sure you're subscribed if you enjoyed this episode. I have plenty of fun gaming content like this and it really likes to do a backflip and a half. Br surprisingly consistent on that. But yeah, make sure you check the links down in the description, make sure you join the Discord, become part of the Scrapper community, say hi, make sure you read the rules though first. I hope you enjoyed this episode, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye!